Today, Scorched Toys at AnyMoon.com is putting the toys aside to look at something entirely different. The Kids Logic 1 8 scale VF1 busts. A total of six busts were made available in 2019 in varying quantities for 229 US dollars. I picked mine up at Big Bad Toy Store, which is my go to spot for collectibles like these. You can support this channel and enjoy tons of great shopping by clicking that link in the comment below. Unfortunately, we're now two years past release date, so the only way to grab one of these busts is to hit the secondary market. There really isn't retail packaging in the sense you would see with a toy. Instead, each bust comes in a brown shipper box that contains a foam sarcophagus locking each piece, wrapped in plastic and tissue paper, firmly in position. There's one page of instructions, which is all you'll need. Before you get started, you will need to hunt down three AAA batteries. Some minor assembly will be required right off the bat. You'll have lasers separately. Not sure how the VF1A head works with its one laser on the front, but there is a very strong magnet that is then going to grab your laser and hold it in place for you, so that's easy enough. Then we have this compartment here. Again, magnets involved. This is where your AAA batteries are gonna go. You can see there, load them up. You'll also see there's the on off switch right there. So we're gonna turn that to on. We got the batteries in there. That's gonna enable the light up features that I will show you in a bit. As far as what this is made out of, it's mostly a resin or polystone as they call it, 23 and a half centimeters tall. That's what it looks like next to a Bandai DX VF1, one of the larger transformable VF1 toys out there to give you a feel for the overall size here. It's also quite hefty. The base is very sturdy. This thing is not gonna go anywhere when it's sitting on your shelf. Let's take a look at some of the features. Zooming in real close, here's the detail within the visor. I might have preferred the visor be a little more opaque, but this does show off everything that's going on within, and there is quite a lot going on in there. And one thing that we talked about briefly was the batteries being in here and there being a switch in there, but when I turned on the switch, the lights didn't turn on. You may have noticed that. Instead, what happens is you press this button right here, which doesn't appear to be a button, but it is, and then you've got that light up effect. If we turn off the lights, these lights are incredibly bright. Now, Kids Logic did tout their diffused LED light technology, which stops them from being laser pointers but this definitely does put on quite a show in a completely dark room. But when the lights are on, it looks just pretty good, I would say. Neat feature to include. Staying zoomed in pretty close, turning the bust around, you've seen that there are struts front and back. So let's see them operate. Now, if I tilt the head this way, you can see this strut does get shorter and this one does extend, so they are functioning like they're supposed to. At the base of each strut is a ball joint, which allows them to move a little bit. Now, articulation of this bust is definitely not a strong suit. It's more like you don't expect a bust to be able to move at all, so that the fact that this has any movement is a plus. But you can see those struts in real life would be a terrible way to go about having head mobility for a Batroid mode. The struts in the back run into the skirt on the head pretty quickly. So this would not be how it would operate. But, you know, it does look mechanical. Some people are gonna love it. Some people are gonna be like, no, with Overtech, there would be a totally different way that this would all work. But uh, the fact that they do ad move at all, I think, is a plus. You can get a slightly off-center look. You can get a dead ahead look. You can cock the head a little bit. So that's all of the articulation we're talking about. Now, as you can see, this is not a strict presentation of what we saw in the anime or any of the line art. We have these panel lines here, which are painted. None of them really correspond to anything we saw before. And I would say that this appears to be an effort to make a live action movie version of a VF1 bust, uh, which is 
good in that there's more detail present here than would be on something that's strictly trying to be out of a cartoon. So I'm okay with that. We did nice clear lens pieces in a few places. Again, that detail here, the weathering that's on there can be a little questionable. If you like stop to think like, why would weathering be in certain places? It doesn't necessarily make sense, but the rule of cool here, does it look good? I think it always answers yes. Again, maybe not the most reasonable choices made as far as the struts go and the weathering, but it looks good and I'm on board with that. Now there are some problems though, not huge by any means. Under certain lighting, some of these warning logos you can see appear to be water slide decals rather than actual painted on like a tampo painted uh, warning. So a good example of that would be this thing that says signal right here. Under certain lights, I can even see sort of where that's not exactly the same level. There seems to be a little bit of a glossy effect and a little bit of a height difference from the uh, area right around it. So again, you have to be up super close to ever notice that and your light has to shine on it just right for it to be a problem. Now this is an odd place to focus on, but speaking of logical leaps and the rule of cool, everything involving the air brake at the front of the chest is kind of crazy to me. Also, the VF1D bust has an air brake. In the show, the VF1D did not. So there's stuff like that, but here we have an air brake. It's got weird details on either side. It's not sitting flush for some reason. These little circles would be bigger, I would think. And they're supposed to be veneer thrusters, if I'm not mistaken. So the last place they would ever be would be on the flap that covers you know, th this air brake. There would, there would never be veneer thrusters inside there. There might be right here, but they wouldn't be up here. So stuff like that. There wouldn't be big bumps at the front of an air brake that's supposed to transform into a jet. This should all be perfectly flat. So things like that. You can drive yourself crazy with it. I am not bothered by it, but I do feel like I should point it out because I know some people definitely will be. Another thing that happened to me, one of these side pieces did pop off despite how well packaged everything is. A little bit of super glue. No one's ever going to be the wiser. So I was really on the fence about buying one of these and that's why it's taken so long for this review to get done. I saw the pictures of it. I saw some of those aesthetic choices and was like, eh, it's, it's not really for me. And then I just on a whim decided maybe I should pick one up. And when I pulled it out of the box, I found myself liking it a whole lot more than I thought I would. So yeah, there are some choices here that I wouldn't have made if I was designing it. But at the end of the day, I think it looks really cool. And I, I really enjoy having it on my bookshelf. I think if you could have had all of them on your bookshelf, that would have been a mega impressive display. But even just grabbing your favorite one uh, could make for a really fun piece. And yeah, if you get close up, maybe you notice some things that you're less thrilled about. But all in all, I think it's a lot of fun. If you're a bust collector, obviously this is not for everybody. It's gonna be an easy thing to say no to for some folks. But if it is something that's up your alley, hopefully now you know all about it and can make that decision for yourself. Check out my full review on anymoon.com. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.